Dear viewers, welcome to the first panel of the third day of the RWS live stream, sharing the passion here live from IWA 2023 from the RWF booth. Together with me today is Stefan. Stefan, how are you doing on the third day? Hello, Moritz. Thank you. I'm very good. Yesterday was an outstanding day. A lot of customers, a lot of very good talks, yes. meeting good friends. Awesome. So, and I think today will be another very good day. We'll be talking about the RWS hunting short rifle portfolio. We'll be talking about trends, why it is that you guys actually developed this. But before this, since we're sharing the passion, sharing the passion among the industry, meaning that people like you working behind the brands, also finding out what the passion of the end user is, because hunting, shooting, that's basically a very diverse topic. Yes. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do. So please allow me the question, what is your passion? My passion is everything that, that shoots. So I'm a sport shooter, I'm a hunter, I'm a reloader. So yeah, everything that makes a loud bang and a bullet leaves the barrel, I'm in. <laughs> this man has gunpowder in his blood. We'll be talking about short rifle. Yes. Why did you guys actually come up with the thought that there is a special caliber portfolio needed and then the short rifle? It's because of a trend, right? It's because of a trend, yeah. Here in the German-speaking area, moderators were forbidden or not allowed. Only very, very limited uh, persons had access to that, but that changed in the last years. So the, the moderators became available for the broad yes. hunting audience and so the hunters were, of course, curious, as they always are. So they got, they got their hands on one of those moderators, screwed a, a screw on, onto their barrels and added those suppressors there. And since then, they don't want to miss it. Yeah. They never turned back. Yeah, they never turned back. They never turned back. Um, but those moderators, as they have a certain length, yeah, which is added to the barrel, made the whole rifle itself. Now update. it felt like they're shooting long range. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they become a bit unhandy when, when doing their, their stalking or sitting on their tree stand or whatsoever, manu maneuvering their rifles in there because of that extra uh, bit of length added on to the their rifle. Yeah, the high stand. Yeah, the high stand, yeah, you know, turning it out of the window, getting in the shooting position exactly. and stuff. But even when you have it on your shoulders, you know, that little bit of extra length. On the ladder yeah, also, everything. On the ladder, on crawling through the woods and trees and all that kind of stuff. So the, the rifles become a bit unhandy. So what did the customers do? <laughs> they just cut off the barrels a little bit. I'm just, uh, the, <laughs> the silencer is about this long, yeah. so I'm just gonna cut out about this portion from my barrel, screw yeah. everything up, now everything is fine. Yeah, that's of what course, they thought. <laughs> of course, that is, that is like, uh, there's like a total crash yeah. for you guys developing ammunition. Yeah. We talked about, uh, before in the German speaking panel, we are talking about short rifle and short barrels. Mm -hmm. You guys use all, usually, the ammunition when you develop it, yep. it's tested with a 60 centimeter barrel. Yes, on standard calibers, yes. On 650 centimeters on magnum calibers. Yeah. So this is the standard barrel length. Yeah. So now someone cut this barrel, put a <laughs> silencer on it, and uh, you guys went ballistic and crazy. Kind of like that, yeah, it worked like that. So. Uh, the problem is when cutting the barrel, you know, uh, the, the bullet has not that much of 12 time in the barrel. So they, exactly. they, they, they leave the barrel, you know, of course, those centimeters uh, short. And so all this powder, which is unburned, which has not uh, released its power, its energy basically, becomes into the open. Yeah? And there where the open is, is now the moderator. So there's two problems, actually. You have a loss of energy to, to unburn gunpowder and that unburned unburn gunpowder burns then in the silencer. So the silencer gets a lot of stress through it. And if you unscrew the silencer from such a short barrel, you can actually visually see what is happening there because of those big uh, muscle flashes and, and muscle fire which you get there. Um, and there we have then another problem when you hunt or, or shoot in the, in the darkness or, or when sun sets, you actually get blinded from that and also your electronic devices which are now also in certain areas allowed have then also their problems with that. But those devices are still sensitive, right? Yeah, yeah. So we talked about what is, uh, what is the barrel length that you guys test the ammunition with. Mm -hmm. What is the barrel length that is actually now defined as a short barrel? Yeah. At what, at what length is a short barrel a short barrel in terms of you guys behind, <laughs> behind the curtain developing everything? Yeah. 
as we said, so the standard barrel length on a standard caliber 3008 or something like that is 600 uh, mi millimeters. Yes. So, uh, and on the Magnum calibers, it's 650 millimeters. Okay. So depending on the caliber, we kind of de uh, declare the short barrel from 420 millimeters to 550 millimeters. So okay. in, that, in that scenario, we talk about from a short barrel. So that is, so that, all right. So now that we've cleared, all right, was a long barrel, was a short barrel, how do you guys solve the equation once yeah. again to make a bullet that actually performs well under these circumstances? Yeah. So maybe the, the more knowledgeable reloaders um, who handle on the ammunition, they might have figured out that certain bullet weights and certain gunpowders, if you combine them, work also on short barrels quite well. Yeah? So you, you want to try to use more lightweight bullets and fast burning gunpowder yeah, to use all the energy of the gunpowder in that short distance which the barrel gives you. So, and this ground principle we used for our short rifle line. So that means uh, we said to the reloading bench, we opened all the gunpowder tins we had. We have to do all the work again, yeah, guys. Come uh, on. Exactly. Come on now. Uh, we have a new new situation, and so we yeah we we, we we tested and tried every combination out possible. We got hands on, and yeah we made it happen. We 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 made it happen. Yeah. Can you can you tell us the the testing process? Yeah. Is that is that a hundred thousand cartridges? Is that one million cartridges? Is that even a number it, that we can? I, I, I don't think that we can count any numbers there because in some situations it might have been worked out a bit faster than others. You know, you learn as you progress. Others more, yeah. more tricky because yeah. each caliber has to be well calibrated individually. Exactly, and on every single bullet individually. Yeah. I that makes it that makes it the, the hard part. I'm happy that I have my job and not you. <laughs> so, yeah. so I can assure you a lot of bullets were shot, that's for sure. So and a lot of data measured. <laughs> I believe. Yeah. Uh, it must have taken some time too. Yeah. So um, well, let's dive right in. What do you guys let's, bring to Let's dive in. Okay, let's start with the calibers first, I would say. Okay. So in the short rifle line we have uh, five calibers. Uh, we have the 308 Winchester as the standard and mobile most uh, uh, best caliber used for short rifles. Then we have the 306 Springfield. We have the 300 Winwag, which was a special kind of a deal. Then we have the 8.57 ES and the 9.3 times 62. So as you can see here, the more classic calibers, uh, they tend to, to work very good with short barrels too. Basically. Yeah. But uh, so that was a caliber overview. Mm -hmm. So now let's get into the different bullets into for different, different circumstances. Yes. Let's start. Uh, let's start all the way to the right. Okay. Let's start here. First of all, we have also a lead version uh, with our Speedy Professional yes. bullet. Uh, so those who who just like to use lead bullets for the future, we have their uh, their their short barrel version with it. Uh, the Speedy Professional bullet is uh, the new version of the H-Mantle. So this is a twin core bullet design. We have twin a, core bullet yeah, design, exactly. okay. We have a soft lead core at the front and a hard lead core at the back. So the front portion of the bullet uh, fragments and deforms on impact. Uh, the back part stays as a solid uh, bullet uh, rest uh, there and ensures deep penetration and an exit wound. Yeah. Combined with a nice aerodynamic shape, also for a little bit of long-range capabilities That's there. That's basically the all-around bullet. It's a bit of, of a bit of an all-around bullet. Yeah, a bit of everything. All right. So now let's start over to the lead-free options. Let's start. Yes. Let's start. Let's kick it off with the hit. Yes, exactly. Our hit bullet is very well known already. We have, we talked before in the German version. There's a huge fan base already. This is our lead-free uh, deformation bullet. Yes. So it's a copper-solid, nickel-plated, very nice mushrooming capabilities, also quite accurate. Um, and as this bullet has a big uh, fan crowd, we said, OK, we, we need to use that for our short <laughs> rifle, uh, short barrel line. And so this is what we got there. You made the short barrel version because you basically felt you're obligated to because yeah. it has such a high amount of fans. Actually, exactly. we had, for those people who have not seen it, I believe we had a content creator, Beatrice, Mrs. Mrs. Wildboar. Yeah. Mrs. Wildboar. Uh, <laughs> what, a was, what a name. What a name. Actually, very nice and interesting person. And she told me that uh, they are... No, she was using HIT for all her hunting life already. Mm -hmm. She basically bought her first rifle. It came with uh, whatsoever, like yeah. a pack of lead ammo. And... Uh, Once that was gone. Once that was gone, she uh, she tried HIT and she stuck to it. Yeah. Since ever. Do you have a lot of fans like this? Yeah, we, we can talk about like this. Yeah, so... In the lead-free version, there's not many really good working bullets out there, but the hit is actually one of them. Yeah. 
So another lead-free bullet that is yes. also working very well and yes. performing is the Evo. Evolution Queen, exactly. The Evolution Queen, to its uh, lightweight, is actually very, very well suited for short barrels, as you can use even more faster gunpowder. Okay. Uh, and the next part, uh, this is a fragmenting bullet. Uh, it's also not depending on a very high muscle velocity. Still, we can achieve a very high muscle velocity because that's what it's all about in the short rifle line. Yes. Uh, but here we have a twin core principle again. So we have a jacketed bullet, but instead of lead in there, we have got zinc in there. The first part is fragmentated. So on impact, the fragments, like on a lead bullet, basically, and the back part stays solid, uh, ensuring deep penetration and exit wounds. Yeah. So a very good, a very well-known lead-free bullet also in the short rifle line. And for those people who will now wonder but what about my favorite form of hunting? The driven which hunt. might be the driven hunt, for example. <laughs> exactly. Conveniently, we've prepared yeah. something. Exactly. Please go into that, what we have here. So uh, we talked about the driven hunt already in our standard configuration. Uh, by the way, I think we haven't mentioned it. The short rifle line is also optical uh, visible to its nickel finished cases. So. Question to my audience. Did <laughs> you notice what Stefan just did? Stefan just casually pointed out that Guy, look, not only do we have the perfect portfolio of bullets and we made basically the unachievable possible. <laughs> but short, we also make them look good. But we also make them look good. <laughs> so this, does, this didn't go unnoticed, but no. please continue. <laughs> All right, now, now even they're looking good. No, no, yeah, okay. Now we go back to the Driven Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> so what about the Driven Hunt? Yeah. So as we have developed basically the, yeah, the universal or perfect bullet for the Driven Hunt purpose, lead free, copper solid, Huge uh, hollow point design with the plastic tip on it, perfectly working on a distance from zero to 150 meters. Uh, and now in a short rifle configuration, nickel finish case, um, adapted powder load for the short barrels. So for those people uh, who have basically their one, and, uh, one gun, which yes. does everything, yes. you know, they can have their normal short uh, Speed Deep Pro or Evo Green for long range. And when they go to, to, to for a Driven Hunt, they use an our Driven Hunt and have the perfect bullet, the perfect cartridge for their purpose. Now in 308 and, and now uh, 306. Exactly, perfect, yeah. That, that's what I forgot, thank you. No <laughs> problem, I can see it from here. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, now basically, let, just please let me uh, give you a, uh, a brief summary. If you are one of those hunters whose favorite form, for example, hunting form is the driven hunt, but you also okay. like short rifles, yep. And you like silencers, and you're looking for a bullet which basically can perform under this very difficult Situation. circumstance, yes. circumstances, but it also needs to look cool. <laughs> then RWS has got you covered. Stefan, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed our talk. Thank you, Moritz. Thank you for the time you spent behind the screens, and uh, I'm afraid you'll probably have to stick there a little longer because we got a whole new day of very cool stuff incoming, new products, Stay Very tuned. interesting people. People, stay tuned on Share the Passion here live from IWA 2023. See you in the next panel. See you. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Moritz.